Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. This video will help you to create an Azure OpenAI chatbot with the Bring Your Own Data option. In this version, we also include AI Vision OCR capability. This is useful if your data includes images and you want to extract text from those images to be included in your data set. AI-based OCR applications such as Azure AI Vision and Google Cloud Vision offer the highest accuracy available today. For more information on AI-based OCR, see our videos on different OCR tools, link in the description below. Bring your own data means that you can provide your own specific data to the AI model, allowing it to tailor its responses and output to your unique needs and context. This is particularly useful for businesses or individuals who have large amounts of proprietary or confidential information that they want to keep private. Many businesses are now leveraging OpenAI models to streamline customer interactions, automate manual tasks, help make decisions, and so on. The tutorial covers everything from setting up the environment to handling user input and integrating the AI model into your application. This diagram shows you the key components involved along with the related internal workflow. Prerequisites for this include a basic knowledge of Python, environment management systems such as Conda, and an Azure account. To learn more on Python and Conda basics, view our video on Python, Conda, and Jupyter Lab. Link in the description below. This demo will involve a lot of steps that need to be performed in the correct order with the correct selections made. Skipping any steps or missing key information means that you may have to delete everything and start over. Okay, let's get started. First, we open the Azure console at portal.azure.com. We will show you the new interface which recently became available. There are a few bugs in this version, so we may switch back to the older version at times. The Azure team is hard at work fixing these bugs. The new version will eventually be more reliable. We know this because we pointed out a bug recently and it was fixed within a week. We will create a new resource group and use this group for all the services we create in this video. This will help us to delete and clean up everything when we are finished. Select our region. For efficiency, we will be using the same region for all of these services. Add any tags here. These are useful for organizing and managing your services. Click on Review and Create and then Create. When this is finished, click on Resource Groups to verify this has been created successfully. If you don't see your new resource group, click on Refresh until it shows up. Next, we will create an Azure OpenAI service. You can see there are a lot of options for third-party applications in the marketplace. Select Azure OpenAI, then click on Create. Then fill out the form and click on Create. Be sure to select the same resource group and region. Pricing tier is standard S0. You can select the defaults on the next few screens. When it is finished, click on the Go to Resource button. On this screen, you will see some information about the service you just created, including the API endpoint for your service. You may want to copy the endpoint to a text file. You may need it later, depending on what's included in your final application. Do this for all endpoints and keys as you go along. Click on the Azure OpenAI Studio near the top. Azure is introducing a new interface. You can choose to use that interface here. You can switch back and forth between the two interfaces at any time. We will use the chat playground to set up and test our chat application. We are selecting the new interface here. First, we want to set up two new deployments. For the LLM model, we are selecting GPT-40. It is the newest stable version of the GPT family of models at the time of this recording. There is a newer one named O1 Preview, but that is still in testing and may not include all the options you are looking for. The 4.0 version includes optimized multimodal functionality, including voice, images, text, and video. Click on Confirm and fill out the pop-up form. We usually select Global Standard. Another common option would be the Standard option. Select a higher value for the tokens per minute rate limit. 1K won't be enough. In a typical chat, we usually use at least 5K tokens in a single message. Here is some information about your GPT model with another endpoint. Copy the GPT model name to a text editor. We will use this in our example application later. Now we will add a new text embedding or vector model. We'd like to use the ADA002 model. We suggest including a model with text embedding capability. The reason is that when using AI search and semantic features with the add your data function, the AI search engine needs to convert your text data into vectors 
or embeddings for efficient indexing and searching. To help with this, Azure provides a service capable of performing this transformation while the services are being created. So when the application is being used, the transform vectorized data is already available. On a side note, in NLP or natural language processing, a token is a word or part of a word, a vector is a numerical representation of a token, and embedding refers to the process of mapping these tokens or other non-vectorized data into a vector that can be used in an AI model. This way, the model can automatically learn the relationships between words or tokens and their meanings. We give our model a meaningful name and use the default values on the rest of the form. Here are some details about our newly created embedding model. Copy the embedding model name to a text editor. We will use this later in our example application. Now we are ready to add our own data. Select add a data source. We will show you two ways to set this up. The first example will show you how to start from scratch where you don't have a data source set up yet. The second example will use an existing Azure Blob data source. Here we select the upload files option. We will be selecting the Azure Blob storage option in our second example. Azure AI search is another useful option that can be set up similar to our second example. Here is a very important point. Setting up the data source and the services here in this playground is temporary as far as the chat studio is concerned. If you close the playground and come back, you will need to set up the data source for the playground again. However, the underlying resources will still be available. They just won't be visible from the playground until you reselect them. If you are building an external custom application, we will need to keep track of the endpoints, deployments, indexes, and API keys yourself. If you are deploying a web page from this screen, all of that will be transferred over into your web service automatically. We will create a new Azure Blob storage resource by clicking on the create link. The storage account name cannot contain dashes, so we give it a name only containing alphanumeric characters. Select the same region that we have been using. For primary service, select the Azure Blob Storage or Data Lake option. Change the redundancy to locally redundant for our demo. For a production app, you may want to use the geo redundant option as it will have better uptime capability. Take the defaults in the next few screens, then review and create the storage service. Once this is finished, you can view the settings for the service by clicking the Go to Resource button. We are going to upload some example PDF files here to be used later in the chat application. By loading these files here, the specific information in these files will be directly available later on when we ask questions in our chat. These files contain both text and images. Drag the files into the upload area. This can take a while if you have many files to load. We have been able to load around two to 3,000, which take around 10 minutes. We also create a new container Containers like a folder in our blob storage helping to organize files. We will only create one for now. Don't change the access level, especially if your data is sensitive. We can change the blob type and size, tier, folder to upload to, along with some index data for these files. Click Upload. Once this is finished, go back to the previous form and refresh the storage selection. You will see your new storage in this list now. Select this and turn on CORS. You need to do this to grant permission for cross-origin resource sharing. Wait for the CORS permissions to turn green. Now we will create a new Azure AI search service by clicking Create. Select the same resource group and location, giving this a name, and change the pricing tier to basic. Depending on the amount of data you are loading, you can select the SKU that will meet your needs. Estimated prices are shown on the right. No need to scale up at this time. This would incur additional costs. You can add some tags here. Click on Create. Once this is done, click on Go to Resource again. You will be making several changes here. We will be importing our data into a search service and vectorizing the data for more efficient processing. We will also be adding a Vision OCR component so we can include images that contain text or other information into our chat app. Click on Import and Vectorize Data. We select Azure Blob Storage here. That is where our files or data is stored. Find your storage account name and container. This is a demo, so we don't need deletion tracking or special authentication. 
After validation, click Next. Our OpenAI service is already auto-selected, otherwise we would need to select it here. We select our text embedding model service here. We prefer to use an API key for authentication. We also need to acknowledge the additional cost. Don't select the vectorize image option here. We don't need this ability as we are only interested in extracting the text from our images. We won't be comparing one image to another. We will select extract text from images here, which means we have to set up another service, one for OCR Vision AI. To set this up, we need to create a multi-service account. So we click on the Create New AI Service link. Select our subscription, resource group, and region. Give the service a name. In our case, only the standard pricing tier is available. We can view the pricing from this link. Acknowledge the cost again. Don't change the networking identity and tag defaults and click on create. Here are some details for the service. Go back to the previous screen and click on refresh. You should see the service now. Select it and acknowledge again. Click next. We want to enable a semantic ranker and schedule to update this index hourly. That way, if we add more data files to the blob storage container, the new information from these files will become available for our chat application. After clicking next, check the information and click create. We can test this new search service by clicking the start searching button. I will only test two things here. One is some text found in the PDF and another is text that is only on an image inside of a PDF. This will test the OCI Vision AI service that we created earlier. You may need to wait a few minutes for the indexer to finish. Once it is done, type in some text. For our first test, we will look for the word black contained in black and Decker. There are several matches. We will see the best match at the top of the output screen. Okay, that worked. Now we will look for the phrase gift guide, which is only contained in an image in one of the PDF files. For those of you who don't know, a PDF file can contain type text and can also contain images. An example will be if you converted a Word document that contained some text that you typed in and a few images that you inserted and then printed the document to a PDF file. When we typed this phrase in our search, we got another match. However, when we searched the text in our PDF file for gift guide, there are no matches. So the OCR Vision AI service is working. One thing we need to point out is that no ACR application or service is 100% accurate. Images come with text that have different sizes, fonts, colors, etc. Some are more clear than others. These variables make it more difficult to attain 100% accuracy. Now we go back to the previous screen and refresh under the Azure AI Search dropdown. You should see your new service now. Select it and enter a new index name here. We also want to add a vector search to this resource. We select the text embedding model to use, then click Next. Here, we upload the same documents, or we can even add some more documents for the index to process. Any new documents would be loaded back into the blob storage along with updating the information in the index. Click Upload. When it is finished, click Next. This can take a while. 2,000 files can take up to 10 minutes or more. We select Hybrid plus Semantic to give our application more capabilities. We can also select a chunk size, meaning the files will be split into text strings of the size we select. We choose 1024 and click Next. We select the API key option again. We need to save the Azure AI search resource name and the index name from here for our demo later. Then we click on Review and Finish. Now we just wait for ingestion, preprocessing, and indexing to finish. Once this is done, we can verify the data source type is Upload Files. We also see our resource and index name here. There are some advanced settings you can change, such as strictness, which controls how much you want the model to use only your data versus using the data from the original model. You can also change the number of retrieved documents to save on time and tokens. We would also like to point out that you may face limitations on how many messages and how big those messages are. Azure will throttle those values so you don't affect others that are also using Azure OpenAI services. You can change your initial usage quota here or request a higher limit from Azure support. A request usually takes one to two days. To change this, we click on the deployment name. We originally selected to limit our app to 10K tokens per minute out of a possible 200K available for our account. When you want to go to production with your application, 
you should estimate how many tokens you will use and request more if needed. We change our application limit to 40K and save this. Now we will show you the second example. This will go much faster as we have already set up most of the services in the first example. Another point, if you close down the chat playground, Azure will not save these settings on this page, so you will have to recreate them each time following these steps. We click on the Remove Data Source button and wait for the data source to be removed. We click on Add Data Source again. This time we are going to select Azure Blob Storage. Then select your storage resource, container, and search resource. You will be creating another index. Keep this in mind. You will end up with multiple indexes if you use this form many times. For the scheduler, you can select one time or hourly again. Add vector search and the embedding model. Select your model and click Next. Using the same settings as the first example, click Next. Select API again and click Next, and then save and close. Wait for the ingestion process again. This time the data source says Azure Blob Storage. Once this is done, we will set up the web app. Azure includes the option to set up a very simple web app for you with the settings you have loaded in this session of the Chat Playground. Of course, you can also set up your own application with more functionality. We will show you an example of a custom application later. Click on Deploy and select Create a New Web App. Give it a name. This name will be part of your web link, so make it meaningful. Select the same subscription, resource group, and region. Then select Basic or Standard for the plan. We usually select Enable Chat History, which will add a Cosmos DB service to this application. After clicking Deploy, you'll need to wait about 15 minutes for the web app to be created. Once it is finished building the website, you can find the link to your website under the Web App Details page or under App Services. Click on the name listed to open a page with more details. Look for Default Domain and click on the link. If you waited long enough, you will see the chat page. You are ready to type in questions. My first test is to see if the web page will answer general questions. We don't want it to. That's why we set the strictness level to the highest level earlier. We ask a question about the moon and get back a requested information is unavailable response. Okay, that is what we wanted to see. The web page passed this test. We reset the chat and now we ask it a question about a topic that was included in one of our data files. We get back a reasonable response, including some references. Looks good. We have a lot of details and even has links to these documents. The web page passed this test also. Now, we are going to show you how to use this in your own custom application. The code for this demo will be available in a Git repo. Link will be in the description below. Our application will run in a Python environment that is set up using Conda. The IDE we will use is VS Code. For more details on how to set up this combination, see our video on Python, Conda, and VS Code. Link in the description below. Before we can run this demo, we need to go back to the Azure console and set up permissions to the services that we created earlier. Go back to your OpenAI service, and before you click on the Go to Azure Studio button, select the Access Control IAM link on the left. Click on the Add Role Assignment, and in the list, search for a Cognitive Services Contributor. Double-click this selection, then click the plus sign next to the Select Members. Then type in the name of the account that will be used for running the demo app, and click Select. If you see the name, click on Review and Assign. Once the role assignment has been added, follow the same process for the Cognitive Services OpenAI Contributor role. Before we can access Azure, we need to install the Azure Developer CLI. The link for this can be found in the description below. Scroll down and find the installation link under prerequisites. Then scroll down on the next page to the install azd command. By the way, this winget command is for PowerShell. Run this from the ps command prompt and agree to the terms. Wait for the installation to finish. Once this is finished, try to run our example Python script. We get an error. Looks like we need to run an azd command next. 
we run this command and authorize our account with Azure, your screen may look different. Authenticated now. We are logged in. Let's test our Python script again. The script can take over 10 seconds to run. Okay, this time everything worked. Now let's go into more detail on the code needed to create our application. We have some setup instructions in the markdown cell at the top. We are using an Azure and an OpenAI library. We import the necessary libraries and methods along with a file that contains all the endpoints, keys, and deployment names. This is an example of how the configuration file should look, replaced with your values that you saved earlier. We use this get bearer token provider method from the Azure Identity Library to get the bearer tokens for our API call. Then we create a new client connection to the Azure service with our endpoint and our API version. Next, we create a chat message with options for how we want this to run. Here, we've selected our large language model, which was GPT-4.0. We create a message under our user role. We limit the number of tokens to use. For testing purposes, this can be low. We select the temperature and a top P, which affect the, how precise the answer will be. This will affect if we want the exact same answer each time, or if we will allow for some creativity. We choose some common values for penalty and stop and stream. We also have an additional settings section, which includes our endpoint and index we want to use. We can set up multiple indexes and search services depending on our needs and use the combination that is best for our situation. Some key configurations here are strictness and number of documents to be returned. We also include our search key and vector deployment values. This takes about 30 seconds to run. Then we look at the results and print the entire text to a file. Here is the content from the first relevant document, the title of that document, and the total number of tokens used for this query. So it looks like we used 4K tokens in one question. This can impact the number of messages per minute you will be allowed. If you go over that limit, you will see an error that asks you to wait for up to 60 seconds and then try again. This is a simple Python Flask web app using the services we created. We won't go over the Flask details here. We have another video covering that topic. Link in the description below. This web app uses the same config file that the Python script and the Jupyter Notebook used. We will include this application in the repo for this video. We start the application and copy the local URL that is provided. If you want to provide this to other users, you can set up an app service on the cloud and upload this code. The service would provide the URL for your app users to access. We will enter in the same question as before. Click on submit and wait for the response. We get the same result as earlier. Setting up a good prompt is key in getting good results and in avoiding what is termed hallucinations. We will cover that topic in another video. Now you should have everything you need to get started. Questions and comments are appreciated. That's all we have for today. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.